Okay, let's be real. Cost of living is out of control to the point where even a good salary isn't enough to get by. A two-bedroom rental apartment in LA is now anywhere between four to six thousand dollars. Even a nice one-bedroom apartment can cost as much as nine grand. Then you add healthcare, insurance, and other bills. More and more simply cannot afford this, and that's why Americans are starting to flock to Mexico. We just spent three days in San Miguel de Allende, which has become the hotspot for Americans looking for an authentic way of life in Mexico. It's easy to understand why people move there, but it's also expensive compared to the rest of Mexico. And that's why we went to Guanajuato. Welcome to Guanajaca. Guanajaca. Hard to say, but easy to love. Some say this town is the next hub for gringo expats. We're here to find out, but also to see how Guanajuato compares to San Miguel de Allende. The first day we spent walking around aimlessly, and we quickly understood why this town is in fact a special place. Before coming here, we also asked our dear friend and San Miguel local Rafa what his thoughts are on Guanajuato. Guanajuato is an amazing city. One time was the richest city in the world. In 1800 they had 22 mines with silver and gold. Wow. And this is a really beautiful building for architectural thing and it's cheaper than San Miguel, you know. The city is located in the literal center of Mexico. That mountaintop right there that's Mexico's geographical center. The city has a population of 170,000 and is located in the altitude of 2,050 meters, which means the air feels thin and the climate can be chilly after dark. Once the sun is gone, it's chilly. Since 1988, it's been a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and that's why you don't see any new developments being built. Even the stores can't use their actual logos, so they are all using these minimalistic and far less intrusive alternatives, and we thought that was super cool. They've also made an effort to paint all the houses in as many different colors as possible, and that alone gives the town a special vibe. Amelia, we've spent 24 hours in Guanajuato. Yeah, it's so cool in here. Could you live here? I think I could live here. I think this is the affordable place compared to San Miguel de Allende. So you have the same kind of charming vibe, but you can also get stuff for your money here, you know. <laughs> So far on our trip to Mexico, this is the most Mexican place we've been. No rich Californians. <laughs> I think we need to see more and that's where we're going to spend the next two days with you guys on the camera. Because this is the city for poor experts. <laughs> we are dreamers. Whenever we go to a new place that appeals to us, we immediately play with the idea of moving there. If we had the money, we would probably have hundreds of homes around the world. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are the very demographic of poor expats moving to Mexico. However, Guanajuato seems like the perfect place for that. And of course, when I say poor expats, I mean expats on a budget. Unless you want something really modern and luxurious, Guanajuato offers simple one to two bedroom apartments for as little as $300 a month. If we really wanted to live a simple life, a monthly budget of $800 would very much be possible. Then Guanajuato suddenly becomes a very appealing point of interest for budget expats looking to move to Mexico. Especially when you continue to get lost in these beautiful and colorful streets. So when you search for Guanajuato on YouTube, all the videos is like, is this Mexico's most beautiful city? Maybe, I don't know. You can see that it's on its way to what San Miguel de Allende is. I think if I was to invest somewhere, Guanajuato would be the place. Um, and although the fact that they have these kind of uh, places where you can have healthy food, that's the number one sign that expats are finding out about this place. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're having this flavor packed lunch here with a ginger shot and water, and it's gonna be less than 500 pesos. It is very cheap here. When we walk around the stores, we can see that we are not getting gringo prices, we are getting Mexican prices. And Amelia, she already bought a few souvenirs. We're even staying at a hotel where we're paying 40 euros per night, including breakfast. We booked this hotel because of its nice ratings on booking.com. Anything above 9.3 usually means it's excellent. It's not six senses, but it is decent. Do we even have your own shower? I don't know how many stars it has, but it has six rooms. So Guanajuato is not only a cheap place to live, it's also super cheap to vacation here. We love it here and check out this square. I love squares. The number one thing to do in Guanajuato is what we always love to do, getting lost. Here you get an idea of where the locals live. You don't take your car here. 
Is this a dead end? The many narrow streets of Guanajuato is almost like a maze of beauty, where you excitedly follow them just to see what's around the corner. Compared to San Miguel de Allende, it's obvious that the food scene isn't nearly as international or creative here. However, we still found lots of restaurants that would keep us busy for a few weeks. When you read about traveling around in Mexico, one of the things every tour guide says is that this is the land of magical cities. And this is because there used to be so many spiritual indigenous people on this land. And there is definitely something about the energy here. When you look at all the buildings at once, it looks very poor, almost like a Brazilian favela. But then when you isolate each house, it's not poor. It's not and in terms of safety, Guanajuato is very safe. It's very safe. Overall, on our trip through Mexico. Without trying to jinx it. We feel that it is incredibly safe. Just as safe as being in Europe. I mean, yeah. honestly, there's so many people who don't go to Mexico because they're so scared of, of you know, getting killed. <laughs> but that's just not our impression at all. The yeah. more we walk around, the more we fall in oh. love with this place. And, you know, it's kind of magical. It's getting it's closer to San Miguel. The yeah, Allende. it is. It is. Actually, I think I would probably prefer to be here and then be a part of the development that's going on. Well, from an investment perspective, but we are not that kind of people. Since Guanajuato used to be the world's biggest silver mining hub, you find these tunnels throughout the city. We are walking through a tunnel and we don't know where it's taking us. Today they function as actual roads. Pretty cool, but also pretty creepy. They're here again. It's really hard to be in a bad mood when you walk the streets of Guanajuato. The atmosphere is so happy and chill, and there are street performers everywhere, and good ones. We're moving here, it's official. This is good. Wow. I speak English. I speak English. Yeah, English. Yeah. Okay. And it says it's medicinal food. Yeah, it means that all ingredients you are putting in your stomach, in your mouth, it adds you. Oh my god, Amelia, there's a book, Thyroid Healing. Amelia recently had a stem cell treatment for her autoimmune disorder here in Mexico, so we were making an effort to cut down on greasy tacos. That's why we found this cute little place, which in a way perfectly sums up Guanajuato. Small, cute, warm, friendly, and quirky. This tastes amazing, and it's just 100% natural and organic. And I didn't expect to see this in Guanajuato. It's even plant-based, you and you are a changed man. I'm a changed man? Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> mm. It's delicious, but in touch with it. <laughs> wow. This was amazing. Uh, it was nice to meet you. <laughs> Coming back soon. So nice meeting you. Good <laughs> year, yeah? Good luck. Nice to meet you. When we say quirky, we mean the fact that you can have medicine food only to head over to the Korean K-pop joint. K-pop! The following day, we tested Starbucks versus local coffee. Turns out the coffee is much better here. You are on day two of Coachella? Let me do me, okay? Well, I want to do you too. Yeah, but you can't. Although Guanajuato feels small, it does have a lot to offer. How about a mummy museum? Is this something that will give you nightmares? No. The latest mummy fashion. This is me, when Amelia asked me to help in the kitchen. No. Some of these mummies have better hair than you, Jorn. It's crazy. Honestly, we didn't know how to react to all this, so we do apologize if our behavior seems inappropriate. It was just such a weird thing to experience. These are real people who once walked around in flesh, but it's hard to actually wrap your head around that. Oh, look at the fingers. Wow. Out of focus, face tracking what, so is face? preferring the mummy over you. Maybe he's more human than me. You asked me before if there was something that could give me nightmares in here, and I said no. But this could give me nightmares. This is 100% freaking. So we might have been joking a little bit, but then right on this side of the wall, there are babies, mummified babies. And that really takes the 
humorous part out of this because that, I don't know, that really messed with me. The way they were mummified is that they were buried and then because you have to pay an annual fee to have them buried, some people didn't have the money, so they would have to be exhumed. And because of the minerals and the conditions in the soil, they were mummified, which is super rare. How did you like the museum? I thought it was great. It freaked me out a little bit. Once you start seeing the babies, it's like, wow, this is serious. In Thailand, the younger you die, the bigger party you have, because it means that the god, gods, they, you were already perfect when you, you didn't have to do anything to be perfect. But well, that's a convenient culture. We are at Macardo Hidalgo, and it doesn't get much more touristy, uh, no. non-touristy than this. This is a wonderful market, and I think actually we don't see too many gringos or tourists when we are here. Yeah. There are very few, because this is like a student town. There's so many young Mexican people coming here to study, and it gives us this really cool young vibe here. So if you are what you like to call yourself an authentic nomad, I think Guanajuato is the way to, to go. Certainly. Hola. Estás on YouTube! <laughs> so we've been walking quite a lot now in this uh, city and one thing that I love about it is that there are so many tiny stores. It's like people opening up the hallway of their home and then they're selling stuff that is homemade out of that door. I could see myself live in Guanajuato. In a way, Guanajuato is everything an expat could ask for, and I think it does complement the locals in a positive way. Of course, expats usually have a negative impact of housing prices, but they also create jobs and opportunities for the locals. And as our cowboy friend Felix said, it's inevitable. If you spend most of your life working on your laptop, having Guanajuato at your doorstep is pretty cool. Whenever you feel like a stroll and some food in a cozy setting, you got it. And when you need a getaway, Mexico City is only a five-hour bus ride away and the Guanajuato airport less than 30 minutes by car. I realize that we are leaving tomorrow, which is too early. I could have spent another couple of days here actually. I'm enjoying this a lot. I think this is a perfect spot to end the video because this wraps up Guanajuato pretty well. This is a city of local people, local culture. So if you are the kind of person who are into the Mexican culture, I want to be part of it rather than jamming your own expat culture. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. But you know, let's go to Oaxaca and eat more good food. Bye bye. Goodbye, Guanajuato. Para todo mal, mezcal. Para todo bien, también. Y si no hay remedio, litro y medio. Salud. Salud. <laughs>